Welcome to Taronga TV. I'm Hayden and this is Grace. Grace is a keeper up here at the Taronga Institute of Science and Learning. Welcome, Grace. Thanks, Hayden. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. This is one of our incredible immersive classrooms here at the Institute. And we're with two very, very special animals. Grace is going to tell us all about them. And the reason why we're here is because it's National, National Bilby, Bilby Day. Day. National Bilby Day. We're with two extraordinary little creatures here. Bilbies. Now, if you don't know what a Bilby is and you haven't seen a Bilby before, they're an Australian animal and we're really, really lucky to have them in our presence and our care here. We're so lucky to have these little guys because there is only around about 10,000 left in the wild. So having these little female and a male, we're very, very lucky indeed. They're so cool. So cool. We have people watching from all around the world, so that's why we go into describing a little bit about these really cool marsupials. Now, Grace, would you be able to tell us a little bit about their physiology, their behaviour and the habitat that they live in? Of course. So a bilby has really nice sharp claws because they turn over a lot of soil and that's super important for a nice dry, arid region like this. So that means that they can help with seed germination water flow into other plants and then aeration as well. So they are kind of our little building blocks of the environment. So they're super, super important in that sense. They have a pouch, like you said, a marsupial. So instead of being like a koala or a kangaroo's pouch, it actually is a pouch that faces backwards. So with all that digging, you don't really want to be filling up your own pouch with soil and all the dirt. So instead it's actually a backwards facing one. So the babies are nice and protected, just like a wombat as well. So the pouch of a kangaroo faces up like that, and theirs is the other way. These faces the other way around. Right. Very so smart. The most incredible thing that I think you'll find about this, and Grace is going to tell you now, the gestation period is... The best in the world. It's amazing. Any female would be jealous. Uh, the bilby <laughs> is only pregnant or is, has a gestation period of 14 days. That's correct. 14 days, which Two weeks. means the smallest or shortest gestation period of any, any mammal in the entire world. And there's not a lot known about the, the actual process, the birth giving process, is there? Because they'd be giving birth... Deep, deep down in a burrow. So right. these guys build the most beautiful burrows and it's actually in a big spiral and that can go anywhere to be three metres deep. Wow. So being nice and down, they're really protected from the heat in the very arid regions during the day. And at night time, that's when they come out. So they are also a nocturnal mammal. Okay, so being out at this time, you've actually just asked them to come out. Grace before had a little little shaker of uh, seed or a little a little noise that it, it, it connected with a little feed, uh, like a little bridge, and it came out. And they'd normally be sort of active at dusk through till dawn. Yeah, exactly. So it's much cooler for them to come out when the sun has gone down. It's also much safer for them to be out only when most other animals have already gone back to sleep as well. So like a lot of Australian animals, they are really, really vulnerable to a lot of predators and predators that we never used to have here. Can you talk us through that, please, Grace? Of course. So, unfortunately, a bilby, along with a lot of other Australian mammals and reptiles and birds, are all in the critical weight range, which means that they are under two and a half kgs. Critical weight range, it's a great thing to learn. I just want to stop and explain that to people a little bit. Can you just talk us through that? Of course. So, when an animal is below 2.5 kgs, that means that they're a really, really easy mouthful or really easy to predate from either a fox or a feral cat. Feral cats and foxes, huge problems in Australia um, and, and really do have a huge impact on little creatures like this. Now in our care you can see we're, we're busily watching him uh, foraging around there for food. Can you talk to everyone and let us know what you're feeding them when they're in our care? Of course. So at the moment I've been feeding him his favourite foods which are mealworms. So any type of little invertebrate or an insect. Um, they also really like root vegetables, so that's something that they'd eat in the wild as well, the type of tubers of the ends of plants. Yep. Um, and that's got a really nice high water quality as well, as these guys aren't going to be finding a lot of water out in the desert. Mm -hmm. um, they also don't mind a little bit of fruit when they are treated to it, and things like fly pupae. So anything that these little guys can fit in their mouths, they will eat. They are just beautiful, aren't they? Massive ears. You can see he's really using his sense of smell there to find on food, isn't he? Yes, exactly. And those big ears is a really cool talking point as well that you've brought up, and that is that they are a built-in air conditioning system. 
So when you're out in a really hot environment, you need to be able to have some type of exchange system to cool down. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what those big airs do. They have very little hair on them, which means that any type of breeze or airflow that goes over them, he can exchange the hot air and he can take away that cold as well. Yeah, right. You could, they are really hairless, aren't they? Beautiful little creature, my goodness. Now, they turn over an immense amount of earth too, don't they? They do. So these little guys turn around about 1.4 tonnes of soil per their body weight, which is an incredible amount considering how little these little guys are. So 1,400 kilograms and he weighs about... He weighs two, two kilograms. kilograms. That's an immense amount of digging and why they're really, really important to the natural world as well, aren't they? Exactly. Our little ecosystem engineers. They are just fantastic. I love them to bits. They're so good. And an animal that not a lot of people know about and not a lot of people really give pay much attention to, but over the years with the conservation efforts from Taronga and a lot of other organisations putting out, they've really elevated the profile of bilbies, haven't they? Exactly. And it's really important for us to get those breeding programs back into areas where these guys have been lost. They were once found across all of the mainland and now they're only in two very small pockets up in Central Northern Territories. That's when sanctuaries and breeding programs and repopulations come into place. So, exactly. so important, isn't it? And the old predator-proof fence, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Those are the sorts of things we love to show you on Taronga TV. And thanks to our friends at Fuji, we can get this gorgeous quality to show you. Really great close-ups as well. It's really great to look at these little creatures, lots of the creatures that don't necessarily get the, the profile that all the other animals do, but we love them just as much. And you should too, because everything in this natural world plays a part, doesn't it, Grace? Exactly. They're all intertwined. Thanks for your time. It's always thanks amazing so to talk to you. You never know what's around the next corner on Taronga TV. We'll see you next time.